Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online series 1 VGC ladder in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and provide live commentary as I go. In this video, I'm going to be featuring a really interesting team with Muk. Now, Muk is a Pokemon that's seen very little play in competitive VGC. Alolan Muk did see a fair amount of usage and was actually quite good back in 2017, but regular Muk from Kanto, just not very strong. So, I saw this team and I was like, I have to feature it. I mean, what in the world does Muk even do? You might be wondering that. Well, first of all, Muk gets access to Haze, meaning that it can get rid of those pesky stat boosts from all of the Pokemon that want to get boosts in the format, including the classic Dondozo Tatsugiri combo. In addition, Muk gets access to Poison Jab, and with its ability, Poison Touch, you actually have a 51% chance of poisoning your opponent's Pokemon. And Poison's just a pretty nice status condition, right? And so, uh, the Muk is a Pokemon that is designed to stay on the field for a long time. It's got Leftovers plus Drain Punch. You can spread Poisons with that Poison Jab. Uh, poison's actually quite good coverage-wise into a fair amount of Pokemon in the format that are popular right now, especially something like Meowskarata, for example. And of course, Haze is really nice in just shutting down those setup-oriented strategies. And so, the Muk isn't really going to carry you in-game, but it's really designed to disrupt your opponent and also, you know, be a surprise factor in getting rid of some stat boosts. In addition, the team has some fun surprises like Faint on Talonflame, which you can use to break through Wide Guard, Sword Stance, Bright Powder, Garchomp paired with Tyranitar, and then Indy plus Armor Rouge. As always, I'll do a quick breakdown of the team, but if you want to just skip to the battles, check out the timestamps down below. And thanks so much as always for watching. If you enjoy, would really appreciate if you consider leaving a like on the video or subscribing to the channel, it really helps a ton. Anyway, thanks so much as always for joining me, and let's talk about this team. First of all, I saw this team on Twitter from a Japanese player, so huge thank you to them for posting it. I've linked their Twitter down in the description below, as well as a rental and a paste for the team. And question of the day, with us using Muk, I want to know how you would buff this Pokemon. For me, I think it would be cool just to give it a fun signature attack. I don't know what that signature attack would be, but yeah, I feel like a unique poison type attack would be pretty cool. But let me know your suggestions down in the comment section below. Anyway, let's just start talking about the team. Of course, the first one I talk about here is Muk. I already alluded to it in the introduction, but basically, this Pokemon is designed to 1. Get rid of opposing stat boost via Haze, and 2. Distribute poison via Poison Jab plus the Poison Touch combination. Muk's base attack is actually decent, so you'll deal, you know, pretty good chip damage with this combo, and the idea is, you know, something switches in, Poison Jab gets the poison, you do like 25-30%-ish, and then you get the poison as well, and then it just starts slowly adding up, especially when Protect is thrown in there as well. This EV spread, I honestly do not know what it is meant to accomplish, but you've got a good mix between all of the different stats, and you've got Grass Terra to cover for that ground weakness that Muk otherwise really suffers from. This team also has Garchomp, and so Garchomp synergizes really nicely with Muk, where you're able to basically uh, Grass Terra and then Earthquake next to your own Muk, which I think is pretty cool. So, overall, I would say that this is a, you know, an interesting way to use a Pokemon that is very uncommon in the format. I don't think Muk is very good objectively, but I think this is a great example of, hey, how do I turn a Pokemon that basically sees no usage and figure out a niche way to, you know, actually let it shine in the metagame, and I think this is really as good as it gets. But, that being said, I think if you're looking for Pokemon that accomplish similar roles, like, I actually think there are other better options out there, but it's unique because this set allows you to haze while also distributing poison, uh, and they're not that that many Pokemon that can do that consistently. And so, yeah, that's what makes Muk unique here. And so you're mainly going to want to bring this against Pokemon that have setup-oriented strategies. If I see Dondozo Tatsugiri, I'm immediately thinking about it, but any weakness policy setups, any Swords Dance setups, uh, I'm also considering Muk here. So, to talk about the rest of the team, you've got Garchomp. I think what's really interesting here is that the Garchomp and Tyranitar have pretty unconventional EV spreads. This Garchomp is max HP, max special defense, and only has, like, uh, and is bold, er, sorry, impish nature as well. So, no attack, no speed. It's the complete opposite of what you would expect from a Garchomp, but since you've got Swords Dance on this set, plus Bright Powder and Sand Veil, the idea is that Garchomp can obviously uh, sustain for a little bit longer than the regular sets with no bulk. Uh, and also, it's one of those things where often people will just expect to knock out Garchomp, but you have so much bulk to work with that you're you're going to survive attacks that people would never expect you to survive. Rock Terror works nicely with Tyranitar here, as Tyranitar sets up the Sandstorm for Garchomp, so you can Terror into Rock and then uh, take attacks a little bit better as well. I, you know, I have, after, after trying out this set, I think it certainly has utility. Um, I do think that, like, maybe Protect could be valuable on this moveset. I actually think, like, having some attack investment can still be valuable, because I've had a lot of situations where I get to plus two attack, and then I just still don't pick up knockouts, which is kind of frustrating. So moving some bulk away from special defense into attack, I think, could be valuable. But, yeah, this is one of those sets that basically catch your opponent off guard. Uh, and the combination of Bright, and Sand Bright Powder and Sandville is also quite nice, as uh, the odds of you dodging an attack is actually fairly high when you combine those two. 
Talonflame is the next Pokemon here. This is pretty standard. You've got Covert Cloak, just max speed, max attack. The one thing to call out here is Faint, which I think is really cool, because of course it allows you to break through Protect, but it also allows you to break through Wide Guard, which is a move that's been really common. And you just look at this team, you've got Earthquake and Rock Slide on Garchomp, Rock Slide on Tyranitar, Expanding Force on Armor Rouge. Breaking through Wide Guard is quite handy. And so, yeah, Faint can be really valuable. Otherwise, designed to just set up Tailwind and Covert Cloak helps against Fake Out, which is really valuable. Tyranitar is the next Pokemon here. Like I said, another interesting EV spread. You've got max attack, max defense here. And so the defense helps against, obviously, physical attackers. And you already have Sandstorm plus the uh, rock typing to get a boost uh, against special attacks as well. Uh, moveset is fairly standard here, but you do have Brick Break, which gives you unique coverage. I think it's quite nice into things like King Gambit, for example, and just Steel types in general. And Rock Terror here to maximize your damage output. Uh, in my time using this Tyranitar, I do think a defensive Terra could probably be a little bit more valuable on this set, um, because I haven't found positions often where the like extra damage output from Rock Terra helps, but I've had a lot of games where I'm like, oh, I'm super weak to a type, I wish I had a defensive typing uh, to kind of cover for it, so yeah. Indidi and Armor Rouge are the final two Pokemon. This is a Psychic Seed Fairy Terra uh, Indidi with Trick Room. A Trick Room, by the, by the way, is just legal on Indidi. Like, it has not been banned uh, in the format, uh, and so yeah, this is just... Another valuable Trick Room user, and the idea with Fairy Terra here is twofold. First of all, you can defensively Terra uh, and then redirect attacks away, such as super effective Dark Pulses. Two, Fairy Terra plus Dazzling Gleam just actually does pretty sizable damage, especially into something like Hydreigon, for example. Finally, you've got Life Orb Armor Rouge, and this is really standard with the Grass Terra. The main thing to call out here is that there's no Trick Room, there's no Protect, you've got Triple Offense with Armor Cannon, Expanding Force, Energy Ball, and Wide Guard. Energy Ball is actually quite important, because if you look at the team, like, it's fairly Gastrodon weak otherwise, and so having Energy Ball to cover for Gastrodon, as well as bulky water types in general, can be quite valuable. So, in playing with this team, I've gone with a bunch of different combinations. Indy Armor Rouge is an obvious lead. You can go with, like, Muck plus one of Garchomp and Tyranitar in the back. I've gone Talonflame Garchomp, where I just go for, like, Tailwind or Brave Bird or Faint into a Swords Dance immediately, and then just try to sweep with Garchomp afterwards. You can go Tyranitar Garchomp immediately, set up the Sandstorm for Garchomp, so that Sandveil plus Bright Powder combos immediately, which is quite nice. I've had games where I lead Muck just to apply a little bit of pressure uh, with, like, Poison Jab, or leading Muck with... Uh, when I think my opponent has the ability to, for example, potentially set up. So, yeah. Anyway, that's it for the team. Let's quickly highlight some weaknesses. In terms of weaknesses, the first thing I'll call out is the lack of protect on multiple common attackers, including Garchomp as well as Armor Rouge. Talonflame also doesn't have protect here. So your opponent can take advantage of that, basically, and yes, you have a lot of bulk on Garchomp, but that bulk doesn't really help if you're not KOing your opponent, and so, you know... I've had games where maybe I survive with Garchomp and the bulk is great, but then they just outspeed me and KO me. Part of the thing with this Garchomp is that it's really slow, right? It literally has no speed EVs here, and so without Tailwind support from Talonflame, you will be outsped by a lot of things that you normally wouldn't be outsped by with max speed Garchomp, so keep that in mind. I also think, like, some of the Terra typings here just don't help very much defensively. Rock Terror does actually help against, uh, uh, you know, some types against Garchomp, but it's not like you resist them, and also Rock is kind of a unique typing where it's like now suddenly you're weak to, like, make it rain from Golden Go, and so, like, you can take advantage of the Terras, especially on Tyranitar and Garchomp on this team as well, and the Armor Rouge here doesn't have Protect and doesn't have any bulk either, so it's fairly easy to knock out as well, so that's another thing to keep in mind. I think, also, if you use Muck, Muck is a Pokemon that can be really cool, but at the same time, it can be a Pokemon that essentially sits on the field and just doesn't do enough for you, right? And what I mean by that is, yeah, maybe it slowly starts spreading poison, but then all of Muck's partners just go down very quickly. Then Muck is just stuck on the field, and you're like, okay, what do I even do with this Pokemon? I can't actually pick up knockouts within any time soon, and yeah, I'm able to, like, distribute poison left and right, but what good does that do if you're not actually able to secure knockouts, right? So it's really important to utilize your main attackers in Garchomp, Tyranitar, and Armor Rouge to actually distribute a lot of damage across the board. I think one other thing to consider here is that, yeah, like, there are a fair amount of common weaknesses across the team. For example, Water just actually hits the entire team for neutral or super effective, right? You obviously have Grass Terra with Armor Rouge to potentially get around that with the Energy Ball as well, um, but Water-type Pokemon can be kind of annoying. I actually played a matchup where I went up against, like, Dondozo Tatsugiri. I was even successfully able to haze it, but then regular Tatsugiri, it was Water Terra, and then Muddy Water just kind of wrecked me in the endgame, especially since I lost Wide Guard support from Armor Rouge. So I think that's one thing that's pretty interesting, right? Uh, just keep in mind that Muck can be fairly passive, especially if you go, like, Muck Talonflame, Muck Indidi. Your Two of your four Pokemon just don't do that much damage. Uh, and so, yeah, play with that in consideration. 
I think also like Tyranitar in particular, like I mentioned, it's got the Rock Terra, so you can take advantage of the fact that it doesn't have really good defensive Terra. Uh, and like Fighting and Grass, for example, are still super effective against this Pokemon. So you can leverage that to your advantage as well. And so, yeah, those are just a couple of things that I've noted. It's kind of more generic, but yeah, big picture wise, I think a lot of the losses that I've had was uh, sometimes either getting baited with Mock and just like not getting enough value out of this Pokemon. And then like my other, you know, strong attackers go down too quickly uh, or just not taking a, you know, a good care of of the Pokemon that I'm trying to sweep with. I think one other thing to think about, by the way, is speed control, because Talonflame, of course, is Tailwind, but without Tailwind, the Garchomp and Armor Rouge, they're, like, decently speedy, but there's so many Pokemon in the format that can outspeed it naturally, even without speed control, so, especially Garchomp here, since it doesn't have speed investment. So just keep that in mind. For example, like, Max Speed Golden Go can be really scary, especially with Choice Specs, and one of the problems I've run into is, hey, I don't get speed control up, and then Garchomp and Armor Rouge just kind of get outsped and KO'd, and so that's one other thing to watch out for. Anyway, that's it for the weaknesses. Let's get into these battles. Okay, I see Dondozo Tatsugiri, so Muck has some pretty interesting applications here. Golden Ghost, Sylveon, Volcarona, Meowskarada. So it's really similar to the rank number one team um, from the first rank season of Scarlet and Violet, but there's Sylveon over the Baxcalibur. I generally like Indy D Armor Rouge here with Muck in the back and then Tyranitar is the fourth. So let's go with that. Basically, what are we trying to do here? One, they're kind of on the faster end, so Trick Room works in our favor in this game. Two, if we can pick up one or two quick knockouts and force Dondozo and Tatsugiri out, then obviously we can haze. Of course, there's a chance that my opponent doesn't bring, you know, Dondozo or Tatsugiri, or maybe they separate the pieces and only bring one of the two. For example, I think regular Dondozo, even without Tatsugiri, is actually decent in this matchup. So that's one thing we'll want to keep in mind. But with Grass Terror Armor Rouge plus Trick Room Psych uh, Fairy Terror Entity, I think the odds of us getting Trick Room up are not terrible. But I'm just hoping to use Muck to counter Dondozo here. Volk Rona Golden Go, okay. Mm, what do I want to do against this? It's probably Struggle Bug Volk Rona, right? Could be Nasty Plot on Golden Go. I'm down to Trick Room. I'm actually down to Trick Room and switch into Tyranitar. And the reason for this is because Tyranitar is really good against both of these Pokemon next turn. And Armor Rouge is just such a good Pokemon. But I don't want to Terra in turn one. And I also don't want to... Like, I could Wide Guard, but then what if they Shadow Ball me, for example? It is really important to get Trick Room up right now, in my opinion. And they go for Power Gem. Okay, cool. That felt like Choice Specs damage and Struggle Bug. Perfect. Okay, good. So, we get Trick Room up, which is already a good start. I can now pressure with Crunch or Rock Slide. I think Golden Go here likely switches out. It's not Life Orb, and that Power Gem did a fair amount to Tyranitar, even in Sandstorm, so I think it's Choice Specs. Uh, I'm honestly down to switch into Muck right now. Crunch T-Tar, or Crunch into Golden Go. Okay, that works for me. Let's see if Golden Go switches. I don't know, protecting Volk makes sense, but they could also go for defensive Terra with either Mon here. Volk switches, nice. I think that's Tatsugiri. Okay. <laughs> Is it Dondozo? Are you guys ready to see this? Are you ready? Oh my gosh. Wait, this setup could not have been any more perfect. Oh, I'm so excited right now. I am so excited. I don't think I want to Grass Terra Muck quite yet, right? <laughs> she got a defense drop there. Yeah, I think with Haze it's fine. Um, are they leftovers here? Okay, Muck heals back. 
Yeah, they are leftovers. Cool. Good to confirm that. So here's what we are going to do. We're going to click Haze right now. And what do I actually want to do with the Tyranitar slot? Because Tyranitar is actually still at risk of taking a fair amount of damage from this. I think this turn I'm down to Haze and Protect. Haze Protect, then I'll switch Tyranitar out into NDD and then Poison Jab into Dumdozo. But here we go. <laughs> Excellent. Getting a Haze off into Dundozo Tatsugiri is like one of the most satisfying feelings in this game. And they wave crash into Tyranitar, perfect. So like this game isn't over by any means, right? Like Volcarona plus the Golden Goal still provides offense. And don't forget Tatsugiri gets ejected out after I KO Dundozo, right? So I still have to be very careful. Grass Terra Armourish helps against that though. But if I Grass Terror, then I become weak to fire type attacks, right? So I gotta be careful. Anyway, two turns of Trick Room left. So I'm down to Poison Jab right now into Dondozo. And... I think I want to switch out into NDD here. But this is what Muck is designed to do, right? You haze away the boosts, and then Poison Jab plus Poison Touch is... Quite fine into Dondozo. So here's Poison Jab. It's not much damage, but we get the poison. And now Dondozo is really on a timer. And they go for Wave Crash, so they're going to take Recoil from that as well. But this is what I'm saying, right? Yeah, Dondozo is actually just like fairly powerful in this matchup. But that's fine. Now, one thing is that my opponent hasn't Terra'd yet, so I think I really have to respect late game Golden Go Terra. That's quite scary. One of the questions I'm asking myself is whether or not I can set up another Trick Room up in this game. Oh, I think the answer to that is yes, right? Because... Yeah, it's the last one of Trick Room and Sandstorm. So, what I can do is... Really don't want to like get like if they click their place to wave crash the muck slot right now is the problem for me. Basically, what I want to do is switch into. Is it better to have armor rouge or tyranitar in the end game? Probably armor rouge, since it has more HP. So I want to switch into Tyranitar right now and protect. And basically, if let's say they try to KO NDD right now, where they don't wave crash into a Muck slot, I bring out Armor Rouge. Or uh, then the next turn I can crunch into Dondozo and Trick Room, right? I think if I get a second Trick Room up in this game, I should win. Okay, they do successfully wave crash into Tyranitar, but that's fine because now it's a free switch into Armor Rouge. My fear is that they just take too much recoil here and end up fainting this turn. It's close, but I think they'll survive. Yeah, actually, especially because Sandstorm is gone now. Perfect. Oh, this is beautiful. Okay. Excellent. Trick Room expires. Terrain disappears. So, I get to bring in Armor Rouge right now. Armor Rouge, I can go for a knockout. Just expanding force into Dondozo, and I'll click Trick Room again. Beautiful. So Tatsugiri gets forced out. And I'm fairly sure, like I mentioned, that was Choice Specs Golden Go, so I can one shot it potentially with um, Armor Cannon. Oh, also, sorry, earlier I talked about how if I grass Terra at Armourouge, I'm weak to fire, but I have Flash Fire, so I'm not. So I shouldn't worry about Volcarona that much, I think. They do bring it out right now, which I think is correct. Uh, I've got Wide Guard, which helps. Like, I think I want to grass Terra here, but they might Draco Meteor me, right? 
Neither of us have Terrid yet either, which is interesting. Expanding Force Spam if I can get there is so good, but I'm not sure how we actually get there safely. Because they might just Draco Meteor this slot right now. Hmm, I just went for Expanding Force Dazzling Gleam. I think that might be a little bit questionable, but let's see. Okay, good damage. Are you Citrus? No Citrus. They go for Struggle Bug, though, so I'm at minus one now. Not sure that's enough to KO the Tatsugiri. Single target, Expanding Force, Life Orb. Okay, does get the knockout. Volcarona is slower. I've got Wide Guard. Uh, one of the problems, though, is that Muck does not hit Golden Go at all. So, their play is to actually just go for Follow Me into Shadow Ball here, I think. Hmm. I guess they haven't seen the rest of my moves yet, though, right? Does Grass Terra on Muck do, do anything for me? I don't think so. So I think I'm going to Terra here. Armor Cannon. And Poison Jab. Ooh, I have Haze as well. Uh, I actually think maybe Hazing was the play here and hope that they don't go for Rage Powder with Volcarona. This game is still so close, right? Even with the Muck strategy going off, like, the late game damage is just kind of tough right now. Maybe I shouldn't have given up Tyranitar in retrospect. That turn was tricky. Okay, they do Rage Powder. Yeah, so Poison Jab. We do get the Poison. Rocky Helmet, yep. I totally forgot <laughs> about Grass Terra ignoring Rage Powder. <laughs> oh my gosh. That was even bigger brain than I had intended it to be. Uh, it turns out we didn't need Haze. We were just so strong and still got the knockout. Oh my gosh. Um, that, that was so funny. I, I did not think about... I, I did it defensively, right? Although I'm pretty sure Spec Shadow Ball would have KO'd me anyway. But yeah, that, that actually always wins us the game. The main thing I was worried about was, like, Golden Go being super slow there. <laughs> That's funny. I was just so stressed from how the whole game had gone that I didn't even think about that interaction specifically. But that's one of the reasons why Grass Terra is really cool. I think I mainly use it or I'm used to seeing it in order to, you know, for example, um, not be put to sleep by Amoongus. But, for example, like, Wolf used Grass Terra and Nihilate to get around Amoongus Rage Powder. So, yeah. Given that we... I, I felt like it was fairly... Was fairly sure it was choice specs on the um the golden go yeah like i i think the play that i ended up happening actually always just wins i could I, I think haze plus grass terra into uh armor cannons like a little bit better just in case i'm like really worried since i was at minus one already with armor rouge uh because muck would win the 1v1 against volcarona so yeah <laughs> that's, oh that's so funny i'm recording this kind of late and i'm like oh I, I thought i had it lost and then the grass tower just ignored rage powder i was like okay sick but yeah basically like muck is really cool right but at the same time the thing with this team is that like neither indy or muck really do that much damage over the long run and so you really need to like get the bulk of the damage from armor and tyranitar tyranitar put on some pretty good early pressure in this game but i sacrificed it in the mid game i think that was maybe questionable because conserving it would have allowed me to pressure with rock slide as well as crunch but my main thing was that Tyranitar had already taken a fair amount of damage, whereas Armor Rouge was undamaged, and so that was, that was kind of the reasoning there. But yeah. Anyway, let's keep things going. <laughs> nice. We are up against the Slowpoke team. I made a video with this team. Uh, so if you want to see me play with it, check it out. It's a really fun team. Basically, the idea is you use Slowpoke to enable... Storm Drain, Gastrodon, Weakness Policy, Torkoal, as well as Absorb Bulb, Arbeliva. So Hariyama Slowpoke and Inidi Slowpoke are the two go-to leads for the team. And I can't really break through that very easily. 
But I know you have eject button on the NDD, so I can utilize that to my advantage, like that knowledge. Oh, also, like, Grass Terra Armor Rouge is a nightmare for that team to go up against. I do want to bring Muck into this one, though, honestly. Ooh, I could also just reverse Trick Room with NDD, right? <laughs> we have so many options. I'm just trying to figure out what's best. I think, like, honestly, Garchomp is really interesting. I'm gonna go Garchomp. NDD, Armor Rouge, Muck. Basically with this, I can just immediately start Swords Dancing with Garchomp. I think there, if I were them, I would go NDD plus Slowpoke, but I can use the fact that I know it's a Jack Button NDD to my advantage. This is a good example of how you can like leverage, you know, common rental teams and basically use it to your advantage. But they actually lead with Hariyama, which is uh, nicely done. Okay. So they can't click fake out on turn one. Um, yeah, I'm honestly down to just swords dance. I mean, the question is whether or not I really should swords dance here. Because, of course, Hariyama has wide guard. I think I'm down for swords dance plus dazzling gleam, though. Against uh, Armor Rouge ND teams, I almost always Dark Terror with Hariyama when I was using that team. Okay, we chip away at Hariyama. Yeah, they go for knockoff onto Garchomp. Okay, that's fine. No Bright Powder anymore. And Trick Room goes up. I'm really curious if they consider Wide Guarding right now. Or just Close Combating. Because I'm down to just go for Dragon Claw into Hariyama and follow me. That covers for Wide Guard. If I were them, I would close combat Garchomp, personally. Oh, you know what would have been cool? Fairy Terra Indeed? That actually would have been really neat, yeah. Uh, okay, Slowpoke just goes for Surf for a little bit of chip. There's close combat, yeah. Fairy Terra Indity would have been really interesting because I would have... Well, actually, I, I guess I end up surviving anyway, so it doesn't actually even make that much of a difference. Huh. Cool. Hariyama faints now. Uh, Torkoal's the main thing to worry about, but the thing is, we have a really defensive Garchomp with Fire Terra. Sorry, not Fire Terra. Um... Rock. Uh, I guess I didn't bring um, Tyranitar, though. Oh, that's actually not good, is it? We can just leverage Armor Rouge. <sighs> Do I sacrifice Muck? Pretty sure Garchomp's going down here. Ah, uh, I should have brought Tyranitar. If I brought Tyranitar, this game would have been locked up, I think. But I just really wanted to try out Muck. <laughs> It's fine. I'm just going to Earthquake Protect, expecting Fire Terra plus Slowpoke. But, um, like I said, Armor Rouge is a nightmare for that team to go up against, because I can just Grass Terra it. If I had Protect on Garchomp, I definitely would have Protected Garchomp, Sacrifice, Indy, Bring Out, Armor Rouge, Grass Terra, Wide Guard, Earthquake. But, nah, I don't have that. So, I'm going to lose the Garchomp here most likely, but that's okay. Okay, there's Surf. Yeah, basically, Tyranitar here plus Rock Terra on Garchomp. I think would have more or less won me the game. Because, like, then I'd have Sandstorm up and, you know, the the Rock. So the combination of that, I would think, allows Garchomp to survive. But I'm fairly sure we're fainting here. Garchomp is actually very bulky on this team, but we've already taken too much damage. Yeah, that's fine, though. Like, one thing that's really essential is how you can serve Armor Rouge when fighting against that team. And I, when I was using the team, I struggled a lot against Wide Guard, Grass Terror, Armor Rouge specifically. So having that here is huge for us. 
Two turns to the Trick Room left. We've got Muck in the back. So I'm down to Terra now, so Earth Power is not super effective. Just expanding Force. And might as well follow me to redirect a potential Earth Power away. Muck plus Armor is just... Muck is actually really solid in this end game, I think, especially with, like, Poison Jab. Um, I don't think Haze is really that valuable, but I brought Muck in this game given that all three sweepers on that team get stat boosts. Arbaliva, Gastrodon, as well as Torkoal. Okay, so we've got Grass Armor Rouge out now. Follow me. And yeah, like, th this is the main issue with Torkoal on that side, right? It's just completely walled by this set. <laughs> they actually went for Heal Pulse, but Heal Pulse gets redirected by Follow Me, so I end up getting healed up with NDD. And the Earth Power, so NDD just survives the turn now. Wow. Sweet. Okay, special defense was dropped, but that's fine. And now oh, here's expanding force. Beautiful. Does get a critical hit on the Torkoal, but uh, with Life Orb Psychic Train, I would think that was enough for a knockout anyway. It is max HP Torkoal, but no special defense investment. Okay. Yeah, I think Grass Terra Wide Guard Armor Rouge is one of the hardest matchups, honestly, for the opposing team. Like, when I was using it, I struggled so much against this, so... It's just tough for my opponent, honestly. Uh, Energy Ball now just KOs Gastron, and I can just follow me. Gastron doesn't have Protect on that team either. It's Ice Beam, Clear Smog, Muddy Water, Recover. And it's not Rindo Berry either. So their only bet is a Muddy Water Accuracy drop right now onto the Armor Rouge. But they may have just clicked Ice Beam, hoping for me to not go for Follow Me. So, those are the two win cons, but yep, it's just Ice Beam. Cool. And NED faints. Energy Ball here now should just get the KO onto Gastrodon. So, basically, like, when I was using that team, I would always prioritize using Hariyama to try to knock out Armor Rouge earlier. But then a lot of my opponents just wouldn't bring Armor Rouge in the early game, and then that would really mess up my game plan, so... It's, it's just really hard. Like, I actually really think my opponent played very well, and they just had no options against this, because it's one of those examples of a team just being super, like, not strong into one specific Pokemon slash set, right? Like, this set in particular, like, not only do we have Grass Terra, but we also have the Wide Guard and the Life Orb to maximize damage output, so, yeah. But this is a, this is interesting, right? Like, let's say you want to improve um, the Slowpoke team for this matchup. Like, you can think about, okay, where where do I fix things? Do I change certain Pokemon? Do I change certain moves? I honestly think move changes don't really help very much. I guess you could put something on... I don't think Slowpoke really... Or, sorry, Torkoal really does anything into the Grass Terra Flash Fire combo, though. So, yeah, I think, like, what I would look towards is actually just replacing a Pokemon. Arbaliva was the one that I used the least when I was at least um, piloting the team, but... Yeah, I think maybe, like, replacing Arbaliva for something that can thread in Armor Rouge substantially more um, could be an interesting adjustment. But, you know, that's how it works in Pokemon sometimes, right? You're going to have tough matchups in a certain Pokemon, and I, I feel like my opponent really did everything in their power, honestly. It's just not easy, so, yeah. Nice. We are now running up against the regional championship winning team. There's not really that much setup from the opposing side. So I'm not sure Muck is really the best Pokemon here, but maybe we can lean into, like, we just featured NDD plus Armor Rouge. Now I can go with Talonflame Garchomp. Talonflame is really cool with Faint, I think. Um, Garchomp with Swords Dance, I think, is pretty sweet as well. I kind of still want to bring Muck, no lie. Because it's fairly defensive. Yeah, it's not bad. Alright, let's go Talonflame, Garchomp, Muck, and... Ah, Tyranitar doesn't contribute much here. I think it's got to be Armor Rouge. Okay, let's try this out. I think one of my favorite things when I feature a new team is just being able to use so many different modes, and it feels like that's been the case throughout this episode, right? So I'm pretty happy about that. I think the Talonflame with Faint is also pretty interesting, because we can Faint Wide Guard. Mimic you, Garganacle. Okay. Uh, Salt Cure is annoying. Play Rough is actually, like, obviously annoying into Garchomp as well. Hmm. 
Although, we do have um, Covert Cloak, right? So, I actually don't take Residual from Salt here. That actually might be a big deal for me. I don't need a Tailwind, right? I mean, it helps against the, what I have in the back. I'm down to Brave Bird, Terra, Swords Dance. And then just Faint Earthquake turn 2. Because I would expect them to play rough into the Garchomp. So, Rock Terror here is really handy. Oh, I guess Tailwind would come in handy because the Garchomp here is really slow. But maybe I can get it up next turn. Oh, maybe he actually protects. Okay. Protect into Sulk here, maybe? That makes sense. Ah, wasted opportunity to not Tailwind there then, but that's fine. Okay, Sword Stance up. Very nice. Yeah, there's Sulk here. Nice. Does not KO us. Sick. Okay. Uh, Yeah, let's faint into Garganackle now in Earthquake. Yeah, I'm going to go all in here. That breaks Mimikyu's Disguise. Should KO Garganackle, I would hope, with plus two. I'm not sure, though, honestly. Garganackle's so defensive. So there's Wide Guard as expected. That's what we were expecting earlier. Faint now is going to break the Wide Guard. Shadow Sneak comes out onto Talonflame. Cool. Yeah, like the only downside is I could have Tailwind to turn one, but I was expecting them to play Rough Guard Chomp, and so that's what I was kind of playing for. Um, but yeah, this is the beauty of Faint, plus the Talonflame combo. Karganako <laughs> really is so bulky. It actually survives that. It's so impressive. Fine, though. It's like in KO range of Dragon Claw now, I would think. Hey, Muck is pretty solid here, yeah? Like, Poison Jab is kind of sick. And Mimikyu doesn't really do much into either Pokemon right now. I think the main thing is Garganako here really should protect, right? And if I were them, I'd consider switching Mimikyu out into, say, Golden Go. So, it's actually interesting to bait that. And switch into Armor Rouge to respond. Because it doesn't make that much sense for them to stay in and attack right now. So, I'm actually down to go into Armor Rouge. And just straight up Dragon Claw. I don't know, maybe this is a little aggressive. But if I were them, I I'm always switching Mimikyu out here. Yep. It's Tauros though. It would have been better off staying in then with uh, Muk just to go for the poison. That's fine. I feel like if you're bringing the Tauros out there, do you even have... Oh, let me Dragon Claw. Nice. Okay. Do you even have Golden Go in the back is my question now. This Rock Terror has not paid off for me. I did it to defensively protect myself from Mimikyu on turn 1, but Armourish having a Terror here would have been way better in this current position. But it's Meow Skirata. Okay. So, Mach is actually really good, but how do I get it into the right position? Ugh, I actually really don't remember how much speed that Tauros had. That's a really important benchmark. I can obviously knock off into this. Like, Muck literally can win me this game if I play with it properly. I'm gonna switch into Muck right now. Dragon Claw Meow Skirata. Ah, uh, if I stayed in with Muck, I would have been better off. I think the main like this is why I wanted to set up Tailwind earlier, right? Because I'm gonna get outsped right now, which is not ideal. They're gonna Terra. Interesting. Okay. I mean, Terra Meow Skirata makes a lot of sense to me. Oh, Terra Tauros though. Okay. Yeah, that also makes sense. I mean, you could just double up on a Guard Chomp right now. 
But I would have gone knock off onto Mach and then maybe target Garchomp with uh, Tauros. Uh, I don't know if that was smart. I think, like, it may have been better to just sack Armor Rouge there. There's Wave Crash, yeah. Almost one shots me. Hmm. The problem is, does Wave Crash from Tauros just KO Muck now? I would think so, honestly. I do have Bright Powder. <laughs> Bright Powder activating here would actually be huge. Because I could just protect EQ. Let's go for it. Yeah, this Rock Terror was on Garchomp was not it. Ah, okay. Yep, they get knockoff off. And the, the problem is Meow Scrot is just way too strong into my whole team. Um, I actually really need a Tailwind in this game. <sighs> Man, I feel like I played turn 1 and 2 so well as well, but it wasn't enough. Tyranitar wouldn't have really done that much more for me. Neither would it Indy. I, I really just needed Tailwind up. That was the main thing. I don't have Protect here, unfortunately. So they should just knock off into Armor Rouge. That should win them the game. But in the off chance, for some reason, they like double up onto Muck. That's my one way to win. Yeah. Meowskrota was just too strong here. I needed to get a little bit more damage onto it. The Water Territorials was also very well executed by my opponent here, so... The team just has so much offense. I was also so scared of Golden Go, but it did not even end up making an appearance. Muck actually did survive that. I, the lack of Protect is what also really um, hurt me. I think I would have been better off in this game actually just sacrificing Armor Rouge earlier, because that knockoff onto Muck was really bad to eat up. I, d I don't know if like Muck had enough firepower to close out this game, though. The problem is I'm just getting outsped by everything, and I'm just getting knocked out by everything. Uh, my Terra usage in this game was not good. I don't think I really needed to rock Terra turn 1, but I do think a lot of players on turn 1 would just kind of be tempted to play rough there, and if they play rough, I'm in actually a really good spot, I think, because Brave Bird would have broken the Disguise, so then I could have gone Faint, EQ, and then... Well, I guess I still wouldn't have set up Tailwind, right? So it's a shame. I think Muck actually could have been amazing, given that they brought Meowth, Mimikyu, and Tauros, but I needed to do a little bit more damage before fully utilizing Muck, and... I mean, this game highlights how bulky Garganacle is, right? I had plus two Garchomp, broke through the Disguise, or sorry, broke through Fane, and Earthquake still wasn't enough to KO. Now, this Garchomp isn't, like, you know, the most offensive, but that was ultimately what led to my downfall. So, if I were to play this game differently, I think one approach could be to set up Trick Room with Indy Another could be to just prioritize setting up Tailwind with Talonflame. For example, if I Tailwind in instead of Brave Burning on turn one, I may have been in a little bit uh, of a better position as well, but... The opposing team also just has a lot of protects, and so they can stall out Tailwind relatively easily. So, yeah, Trick Room may have actually been the better approach, but great execution by my opponent. I think um, the turns where I think I could have really improved on was when I switched to Mock Out. I was really expecting a Golden Goal switch in. If I had just stayed in and clicked Poison Jab, it I would have allowed to, like, gotten some chip damage immediately, and then Muck would have been really well positioned to just deal with Meow Scarada plus the Tauros, but I really expected Golden Goal in the back. So, yeah. Either way, though, nicely played by my opponent. Okay, final one is a rain team with Pelipper, Palafin, Meowskarada, Golden Go, King Gambit, and Beriscuta. I feel like after that last game, I'm like, Muck is really good, but I didn't position it properly. Like, it's super good in a King Gambit as well as Meowskarada, right? Mm, they have wide guard potential from Pelipper, which scares me. Swords Dance Garchomp is not bad. Beriscuta scares me a lot. I think Pe Pelipper Beriscuta is just quite intimidating here. But it's a defensive Garchomp, so I'm down for Talonflame, Garchomp, Tyranitar, Muck. This team is quite similar to the one that Jody used to get top 4 at regionals. Uh, he had Steel Terra Salamence over Beriscuta, but all the other Pokemon are the same. But I think Beriscuit is actually a pretty big difference maker here. So, I'm just so sad because I feel like I could have done Muck more justice in that last game. It totally could have won me the match. Palafin, Palafin. Shiny Palafin! That's my first time seeing it. It's so pretty. <laughs> uh, 
even worth tailwinding on turn one? I probably should still tailwind. I don't know, I honestly really want to tailwind into Sword Stance here. Let's go for it. It's a little bit greedy, but the Garchomp is really bulky. And they actually Jet Punch, okay. That makes sense. When you set up your own Tailwind now as well. Garchomp getting this initial Sword Stance is really good. Okay, I'll take that turn, that's not bad. That is not bad. Going to Tyranitar now. I think Wide Guard plus Heart Switch Palafin feels like the obvious play right now. Um, what would they switch into is the question. Because I could knock out like whatever is switching in. I don't think Pelipper... Oh, no, Pelipper Wide Guard is actually pretty annoying here. So I actually don't mind doubling up on Pelipper right now. I'll go for Crunch and Dragon Claw into it. Yep, Palafin Hard Switches. Which makes me think maybe they're Choice Banded. No, there's not really much that indicates that actually. And they Wide Guard perfect. Okay, so now Garchomp is pretty well positioned going into the next turn. Uh, it would have been so sweet if Dragon Claw KO there, but this is bulky Garchomp. Okay, so that turn works out well. I still have weather control. Now you don't have Pelipper, so you can't control the weather. Uh, Mock is obviously completely useless against Golden Go, so we'll have to keep that in mind as Meow Skirata comes out. Huh, Meow Skirata coming out makes me honestly want to just go for Protect into Earthquake. Because then Muck can win against Palafin as well as the Meowskarada. They might just protect Golden Gold, though. I, without knowing the item on Golden Gold, it's tricky. So they're gonna Terra, okay. Golden Go? Okay. Flying. Okay, Steel is very good to see here. I'm fine with that. They might just go Flower Trick plus Make It Rain onto Garchomp. Oh, it's Scarf. Okay. But now that you've turned into Steel, it also means Muck can actually hit you for damage. We might survive Flower Trick here, honestly, given how bulky we are. Protean. I'm sure it's targeting Garchomp, right? Oh, that just wins us the game. Muck actually wins us the end game now. <laughs> because we're Grass Terra with Muck as well. Wait, how sick is that? I'm really surprised they didn't target Garchomp there. Beautiful. Okay. Yeah, I think Muck actually should secure us as this end game. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. It's not over. I wish we could have seen Bright Powder activate <laughs> at some point. Especially with Sandveil. But that was a big, big turn. Elephant is out now. That looks so cool. Like, I think with Grass Terror we should win, but uh, I'm not 100% sure on that, honestly. I also don't know if Flower Trick KOs. I don't think you actually knock out both Pokemon here. Uh, without knowing the item, I do think I want to just Rock Slide Dragon Claw. Okay, they jet punch. <laughs> we get the sand veil. <laughs> nice. I actually wonder if that would have KO'd, um, given how bulky the Garchomp is. But yeah, like the odds of Garchomp dodging an attack when you have sand veil and bright powder is actually decent. That's one of the nice reasons to use it. But now with grass terra muck, we should be good. So I'm gonna just bring out muck. And th this is what I was saying, right? I felt like I didn't do Muck Justice in that last game, because like I think I had a lot of potential in the end game, but I didn't distribute my damage well enough, and I kind of just got swept. And in this game, I was able to put on a little bit more offensive pressure. The main thing was just not getting caught off guard by like the wide guard, right? But yeah, let's just Terra now. 
Terra, Poison Jab, and I think Muck should win in the long run. And Dragon Claw. If anything, I honestly wanted that Jet Punch to hit because I wanted to, you know, show off the, the Muck 1v1 in this end game. But here's Grass Terra. Okay. Jet Punch will connect this time around. Yeah, the Garchomp is so bulky we even survived that, so nice. Dragon Claw crits, does not get the KO, which is kind of wild. That was a plus two critical hit Dragon Claw and Palafin still survives. But once again, the Garchomp's just not that offensive. But basically, even if both Jet Punch is connected, I don't think the Palafin's ever winning the 1v1 against Muck in that end game. So yeah, I think the main thing I was curious about is whether or not Flower Trick would have KO'd Garchomp. Um, the turn that they went for Make It Rain plus Flower Trick, because the Garchomp is so bulky. And so if he survived that Earthquake, then we'd be in the same position, essentially. Um, just like... The thing is, Muck is just really solid in the end game because of the Grass Terra. Uh, it, it is kind of scary though, because Meowth could of course knock off, and so it would get rid of the leftovers. And that was actually the problem I ran into in, in game three in that loss. Like I think I would have been better off just once again sacrificing Armor Rouge and playing towards the Muck end game. But part of the other problem in game three was that they had the Intimidate cycling as well, uh, which made things more difficult. But yeah. That was a really fun set of games. I mean, we brought Muck to most of them. I wish I could have done it a little bit more justice, like I said, um, in Game 3, because I think it was actually super good into that team. But overall, glad to feature the Haze uh, against the Dundozo, of course, in that first match. That first match was still crazy <laughs> with the Rage Powder. But yeah, uh, Muck is a really interesting Pokemon. I would really not advise using it unless you really love using, like, you, you just really want to make Muck work. I think it's not the most consistent option. I think there are better options for, like, Haze, for example, or, or anti-Dondozo, uh, but I think this set is basically how you can maximize value out of a Pokemon that seemingly is, you know, doesn't look very good on paper. So, yeah. Thank you so much, as always, for watching, and I'll see you all next time. All right. Peace.